So what are we going to be able to do? Well, I want to put forward to you a five-point plan. And this is something that Mike Brune has been talking with our board of directors about. We'll be having a board meeting this coming weekend where we'll discuss it in more detail. So you're getting a little sneak preview. So this isn't necessarily where it ends up. But uh, this is what the staff and the political committee have been talking about and are going to take forward to the board. First one is what I call a democracy track. And that basically says, we've got to fix our democracy. We have just witnessed the most expensive election in history and just seen all this Koch brothers money, Karl Rove money just flooding the airwaves, you know, to the point of, you know, just people getting nauseated if you happen to live in a swing state because there's nothing but ads going on all the time that are negative ads, blasting people because they support clean air and clean water and women's health and terrible things like that. And so somehow we've got to fix this, and at the same time we're living with the Supreme Court decision that said corporations are people and money is speech. And that is now the law of the land according to the Supreme Court. So what do you do about this? Well, a couple things that we're looking at. One is right after the election deal with the issues of voter suppression. So here we have these super long lines, we have people requiring photo ID. I mean, there were all kinds of legal challenges that were taking place, but frequently they took place too late to actually fix the thing for this election. And as a result, we're still seeing people standing in line for eight hours. We're still seeing too many challenges. We're still seeing provisional ballots out there that who knows when they'll be counted, maybe by 2013 if we're lucky. So that needs to be fixed. And it was great to hear President Obama in his, in his victory speech on election night talk about that was one of the things we need to fix. It is a priority for the Sierra Club, along with our partners. And in our legal department, we have one of the largest law programs in the country. I mean, people always hear about Environmental Defense Fund, NRDC, these are the lawyers in the Sierra Club, are the rabble-rousers and agitators. But in fact, we have a huge legal shop. And about a third of our lawyers were deployed around the country, helping to protect those people that were voting. And we want to continue with that process going forward. Also, I just was reading today that uh, your little uh, Alabama case is going up to the Supreme Court dealing with the Voting Rights Act. So, you know, there's another sort of opportunity where we can try to make sure that we aren't uh, coming up with squirrely state rules that are then going to disenfranchise people in the future. So, even though it doesn't sound like a Sierra Club issue, I just want you to know that that's something that we are recommending the club be engaged in with our partners. Second, even though Citizens United is the law of the land. What are things you can do about it? Well, one, President Obama, because he's going to be in for four more years, has an opportunity to appoint some new Supreme Court justices, presuming there's some retirements. So making sure that we actually get people that really understand that corporations aren't citizens and money isn't speech is going to be really important because we need to ultimately get a majority of the Supreme Court so we can turn around and revisit that issue because it really is such an atrocious, such a politically motivated decision that makes no sense legally. Then there's the question of what do you do when you're living with it? Well, one is, yes, it may, it may be speech, but we ought to know who's speaking. And as a result, we ought to be passing legislation and requiring disclosure of all the, that money that's flooding our politics. Also, we just need to create the public backlash to all this. You know, people are just resigned to it. We need to turn around and just say, this is unacceptable. Because changing the politics so that people are just saying, we cannot live with Citizens United, is the way we'll ultimately get it overturned, either by having a new Supreme Court or ultimately going for a constitutional amendment. But one way or the other, we've got to change this or else we're just going to find that our democracy is being taken away from us. We also need to stigmatize those that are flooding our democratic process. So we already have a little program about Koch brothers, but just beyond that, looking at the rest of the dirty money that is flowing in. So we ran a program this time that was called Toxic Money. And we basically want to make that into a much bigger campaign so that people are seeing who is putting the money in and exposing them and then making it to a point where politicians don't want to take that money because they will be stigmatized if they do. So, you know, we're looking at some stuff uh, Bill McKibben has just started a tour post-election that is called uh, Do the Math Tour. But among other things, I'll talk about do, what Do the Math means in a minute, but among other things, he's promoting a divestiture effort. 
So going to college campuses and basically saying in the same way that college campuses weren't supposed to invest in South Africa during apartheid, we need to be divesting from all oil and gas and all coal money. And so if we can start with the campuses, but then broaden that, so pretty soon state retirement funds are saying, we're not going to put our money in oil and gas and coal, because they're the ones that are polluting our politics. They're taking our money, and they're turning around and taking away our democracy. And that's not the way this thing ought to work. So instead of just saying, these are the good guys that are supplying natural gas and oil so that we can run our cars and heat our homes, which is how people tend to look at them, we need to say, no, 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 no. These are the people that are polluting the planet, blocking progress, stopping clean energy, and basically buying the whole political game in this country. And so that's the way that we've got to turn that whole thing around. And then lastly, this is the opportunity, I think, for the Senate to adopt new rules. I doubt that they will turn over the filibuster, but there are many, many things they can do to make it so that the minority, whether it's Democrat or Republican, can't operate in a way that they block all progress in the Senate. So it's going to be very important, I think, for Harry Reid, right out of the chute, even though he doesn't have 60 votes, to adopt new rules in the Senate, because the Democrats can do that on their own. This is about your democracy idea, which I love, by the way. I talk about making democracy work myself as a journalist. Um, what if you live in a place where the stories just don't get told that will make it even possible you know, to make, to make this democracy work? There's a lot of the stories you're talking about living in California. You're assuming some things about, about Alabama that, you know, you know what I mean? People just don't necessarily know here because even the major newspapers don't tell these stories. You know what I'm saying? So, so uh, are you are you doing? I mean, obviously everybody's got a website and all that, and doing Facebook. But are you are you thinking about spending, you know, some time and resources somehow or another helping to build us an alternative independent web press that's funded, that can get the audience and tell the stories that aren't being told? Well, does that come up? As many communication channels as possible. If we are going to be held hostage to the national networks or you know, the choice between MSNBC and Fox News and everybody just picks what they want to hear, you know, we aren't going to get there. So there's got to be much more uh, access to information and people being aware of that and then going out and finding those particular channels. So you know, it's everything from you know, getting information out through the blogosphere, getting it out through Twitter feeds, getting it out through Facebook, getting it out through independent web networks, you know, whatever it is that's there. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, Bill Moyers writes something and then it shows up on Alternet and then people then start forwarding that around. Right. Well, you know, he doesn't have a major microphone right now, but he's got a major following. They invested in networking and communication and relying on technology. Right. And those are the kind of things we need in the future if we're going to be successful.